Hello everyone, Craig Dunkley here and welcome to the Beyond Growth Show. I'm here with the always wonderful Claudia Harvey. Hey everybody, hey Craig. Hello. Uh, everybody listening and viewing and tuning in, the Beyond Growth Podcast is a podcast for everyone who wants to increase their wealth. Craig and I are business owners and investors and we share our insights into building wealth, bring new perspectives, and we introduce you to wonderful expert guests from all walks of life. We use the three pillars of possibility, which include emotional support, business strategy, and financial understanding to help our listeners and viewers with their goals. So Craig, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thank you. How about yourself? I am great. It's springtime and spring is in the air in Toronto and I'm just doing fantastic. And it looks like you're dressed very comfortably today. Yeah, yeah. For all the viewers and listeners today, we have Emily Braun on. I'm actually taking some of Craig's uh, um, verbiage here, but we have Emily Braun on and she's a lifestyle consultant, talks about expat opportunities. So I, if anybody's watching, uh, I'm wearing my vacation outfit, which would I be wearing if I was working in Maui on a beach right now? <laughs> so just for Emily. <laughs> Yeah, so just to add to that, our guest today is Emily Braun, and she's an international lifestyle consultant. Emily will be talking about remote work, and as you said, digital nomads. And, you know, I know so many people want to, you know, move away, especially in these times, there's an opportunity to work remotely. And so many people think about that and would love to do that work in remote areas, uh, maybe even in better weather than where they are, but do they actually take action to make it happen? So I think in today's podcast, we'll see how you can actually take action, maybe even connect with Emily and make that happen for yourself. I think it's a great, great topic because as you said, in, in our last year of COVID times, people have had to work remotely and it's now kind of a fact of life. It's, it's easy to do. So why not do it from a place that you actually thought that you'd like to move to? So when move there, then I might as well move now. So that's what we're going to talk to Emily about. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very good conversation. And, uh, you know, if you have any interest of moving and working re remotely, definitely make sure you stick around, listen to the whole show and, uh, you know, maybe see what's right for you. Right. And now before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube and Spotify channel. And please click the bell for any updates to our videos. And before we continue, let's start off with something positive, Claudia. And today's positivity is Happy Canada Day. So Happy Canada Day, it's the first launch really to the summer season in Canada. It's a long weekend. And what are you going to do for the long weekend, Craig? Uh, I think this year I'm going to just hopefully enjoy the nice weather. Yes, yes. It's been a long winter in Canada. And uh, I think it, some chill time is in order. Um, most Canadians kick back on the long weekend with going to the cottage, going to a lake, going to the pool, and we can finally do that. So I'm truly looking forward to chilling. Let's bring on Emily. Hi, Emily, how are you? I am okay, thanks. Hi, Claudia, hi, Craig. I'm so happy to be with you today. Oh, well, thank you for joining us. We really, really appreciate you joining us. It's gonna be a really interesting chat, telling us about what you do. Yes, we're really looking forward to it, Emily. So having said that, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and what brought you to the idea to create this unique type of consulting business? Uh, my name is Emily Braun. I live in Canada for 24 years already. Uh, before coming to Canada, I lived in three different countries. So I have a lot of immigration and travel experience because I'm avid traveler. And despite living in different countries, I always like to travel. And I opened my international lifestyle consulting because I got idea to help people uh, to find destination, a personal plan and customized solution uh, for the best place for life, work or retirement overseas uh, based on customer particular situation, uh, personal preferences, desired lifestyle, uh, connecting with reliable uh, local professionals abroad. Wonderful. Well, um, just for you today, Emily, because I know that this what we're talking about is living abroad. Um, for all our viewers and listeners, for the viewers, I'm wearing my boho today because I thought I'd dress for the occasion. I'm wearing my beads. I'm wearing my paisley, I'm wearing my silk, and this is what I would wear on a beach if I was in Maui, which I'm going to be one day. So that's where I'm going to be working one day. Good for you. <laughs> 
So just for you, I'm wearing my little outfit here. <laughs> um, so what brought you into this type of consulting business? I'm like, what, what inspired you to do this? So first of all, I, I was looking to some niche, to something that nobody yet doing in the, in the industry. And I know several publishing companies, several uh, big companies, uh, as a type of com uh, companies working in this direction, but nobody providing personal one-to-one -one consultation actually for people uh, to, to help them to, to filter out different options because there's so much like information on the internet and people bombarded you know, by different advertising, but really to find what is matching like my particular situation, your particular situation, and people are different, different, you know, family situation, different budget, different uh, personality type. That's why I came across uh, uh, this kind of uh, consulting because I collected a lot of information over the years and I have understanding on what kind of place that I visited or connected with might match uh, different people. Right. And so what are the top destinations that you have provided to people or that you select or do people come to you and say, I want to live in Belize or Mexico or so which way is it? Do they come to you or do you offer opportunities? So I'm looking for people who are interested in uh, this particular, uh, uh, you know, remote work or maybe a retirement option. It might be part time. Uh, uh, the countries I'm working with, uh, Mexico, Belize, uh, Panama, Nicaragua, uh, Costa Rica, uh, and to be extended to other Latin American countries later. And in Europe, uh, Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Bulgaria at this time. And why I have such a variety? Because again, every place, every country is offering different lifestyle, which might fit different type of people. And even in North America, you know, we have uh, people coming from all over the world and they might have, and they have different preferences. Uh, and the companies I'm working with are really providing these different opportunities for the different taste. Wow, well, that, well sounds, that sounds so, great. So Emily, can you expand on that a little bit? You mentioned a number of different countries. So there's gotta be different lifestyle options uh, in each one of them, some of them may be similar, some of the different. So what type of uh, different lifestyle options are available in the different countries you deal with? Like you completely correct, like in each country and say Mexico, Mexico, it's huge country with different climate, with different uh, states, a different cultural tradition. And I'm very involved with, uh, with Mexico. So it, it ca can be, you know, from co-living, co-working place for digital nomad, for remote workers to some luxury opportunities. So depend on what is the budget and what people are looking for. If uh, I will take a country like Portugal, for example, it's uh, again, very popular with both target groups. Uh, I'm working with the digital nomad, remote workers, and baby boomers, because this country has uh, already established hubs for baby boomers and remote workers. Uh, and again, what is the difference? Budget, climate, uh, language, you know, uh, scenery. <laughs> And I believe that soon uh, I would be able even offer opportunities for people to be part of the company and actually have experience over the years in each country, say every winter, if they wish. So there is a lot of options coming uh, and I'm really excited about it. Awesome. So Craig, don't, isn't your parents, uh, they go to Portugal every year and they've been doing that for what, 20 years? So oh, yeah. Yep. They're not quite baby boomers, but they're definitely the retirees, but they are kind of ahead of the curve, I guess. So they've been enjoying Portugal. Yes. I can tell you that curve uh, to, to, to retire or just to live and work in Portugal is 100 years old because uh, British and Scandinavian uh, pre-retirees, so even I'm speaking now with you know middle-aged professionals, they already flocking and living in south of Portugal and Spain for years. And there's the communities. It's actually one of the biggest interests of mine. It's communities of expats in different countries. 
So people coming, there is already infrastructure, but you need to know where to come. It's what I'm helping people, you know, to navigate to. Like what is might be good for like remote workers, digital nomad, uh, uh, like baby boomers or prairie theories might uh, require like different condition, you know, close to the hospital or close to the international school. There's uh, uh, different options. Right, well, that makes sense. And do people come to you because they want to relocate their entire life or is it more of a part-time, I just want to be there for three months, try it out and come back home? Uh, like I'm open to consult and advice on both options, as you mentioned, like part-time or full-time. So if required, uh, I'm connecting with people who might help them to prepare in advance. And it might be professionals in Canada, for example, uh, financial advisors, tax advisors, because people need to do it, you know, uh, professionally. They need to understand what they are doing. It's what actually I'm uh, uh, promoting. And at the same time, if they interest after time, uh, I might connect them with, uh, with the lawyers. Uh, if they interested to purchase some uh, property, they like it for investment purposes or for vacation home, you know, abroad. Like my contacts in different countries, they can arrange uh, this kind of help as well. So as you move people or help people move to these uh, new locations, did, is there a lot of tax considerations that they have to take in mind? Uh, obviously. And again, it depends on what time. You know, as a Canadians, for example, uh, we know that we can uh, uh, live um, uh, six months away, what many Canadians prefer to do uh, and come back or say, say for the winter uh, to, to relocate to a warm place. Uh, so I really um, offer people and advise them to connect with a tax advisor, financial advisor, just to be prepared because I, I know some changes might come on this side, just, you know, to, to, to avoid any uh, issues uh, along the road. Right. And the other thing that goes kind of hand in hand with taxes is health care, because yes. Canada is, is tremendously valuable for health care. But America is a little bit of a different program. So how does how does an expat get into the healthcare system of their adopted country? Uh, actually, I started my company with medical tourism. When I had my travel company, I started with medical tourism direction in Latin America, which opened for me, you know, new ideas and horizons. And uh, like we know that like dental tourism, it's very good. Uh, uh, services can be provided and I myself get through the services. All what I'm offering, I have my personal experience in Costa Rica, in, in Mexico, and I can tell you that from my experience traveling in these countries and speaking with expat, expats living for years in Mexico, in Ecuador, in, in Colombia, I can tell you that their medical system really on a high level and even paying uh, some uh, fee for uh, private health insurance, people might have superb uh, health care. It's what I'm mostly uh, sharing with Americans who are very concerned about uh, cost of uh, health insurance in the United States. But even for Canadians, uh, I myself uh, enjoyed very good and, and had very good experience and if necessary, I'm connecting with providers. It's what I mentioned, local providers, uh, health insurance um, uh, representatives, actually owners of the company who might help people uh, to, you know, to, to set up this site. But I can tell you from my experience, I know that many people prefer even not to have uh, insurance, uh, but they pay as they need it and they're very happy with it. Right. And so how have you found that COVID has affected the business, affected travels? Obviously, travel was decimated with COVID. So are you starting to see things starting to open up and people moving around? Or are people just going in the last year, they're like, okay, I don't need to be here. I might, might as well just be isolated or social distanced in a place on a beach where I've always wanted to go. So how has it affected your business? So actually, uh, this uh, new trends affected my business because before I was working as a travel company by the name Travel Passion. 
But last year, when all travel was uh, actually, you know, grounded, and I understood that travel will be uncertain for a number of years, uh, I decided uh, to, to change my company direction and actually utilize my connection and my knowledge. And since then, I have uh, developed my network. Uh, and since a uh, new group, remote workers came abroad, so I started to, to work with baby boomers as well with remote workers because many people realized uh, the opportunity to work remotely uh, really gave them option not to be, say, in Toronto or uh, someplace in the United States, but they can spend several months, what people already do, in uh, Caribbean islands, in uh, places, destinations that I am promoting. So somehow uh, I feel that COVID became accelerator in my particular case from business point of view. And it's, uh, it's new trends which became uh, part of the life. And I believe and I'm really excited about remote work options. And I see a lot of trends in Europe, in the United States I'm following, I'm part of the different groups. It will be growing. People already started uh, moving, moving from uh, state to state, from country to country, from continent to continent. Wonderful. What's your favorite place, Emily? Uh, it, it, it's hard to say. You know, for me, good place when I have good people. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, like for myself, by the way, I, I'm thinking about uh, like part-time relocation myself. If you ask me myself, I still didn't decide because every time I, I see new community, or I get information about, you know, some other partners, I became excited uh, to at least to try to spend time over there. But so far, I can say that Mexico is uh, close to my heart. It's close destination to all of us. And with all my contacts in Mexico, um, I see I see the future of Mexico in regards of attracting a lot of people. It's already happened. Right, right. One of my best friends actually lives in Mexico in San Miguel. So yes. she's been living there for about three or four years and she's just, oh, she's living life large. Like it's a whole community, it's whole restaurants and you know, pre-COVID, um, just a whole wonderful lifestyle that we we just don't have here in North America, per se. And I'm offering, like, to everyone, it's not so far away. That's why I like Mexico. There's a lot of international airports. I've been in San Miguel de Allende. I, I, I traveled in all central states. I've been in Baja California, in Riviera Maya. I have actually my uh, second property. I really like this piece of land. I'm, I'm planning to travel in seven additional Mexican states and to speak with people in, in each community to show different places, to, to show how people are living in these places or for years already, or just now trying to navigate the, you know, uh, the, their future. Yeah, and we have friends in um, Costa Rica as well that moved there a number of years ago and living a, a beautiful life down there and uh, actually investing in the country. So can you tell us if there's uh, international investment projects that people actually get into when you relocate them, help them move to these other locations? What's really available for people? You know, as you know, we're, we're big on investing in real estate and there's got to be investments in these communities, these countries as well, I would imagine. Obviously, and actually investment opportunities, it's a part of the services which I mentioned on my website. And I'm connected with uh, uh, big and known developers in Central America. It's one of the, my best partners and they building, they already building and now extending uh, communities for Americans and Canadians in Nicaragua, in Belize, in Panama, it's the same uh, development company, actually Americans who already living for 25 years in Central America and now extending to um, uh, Mexico as well. So variety of uh, investment opportunities for different budget, different lifestyle, because they, as me or I am with them, uh, started to work for baby boomers like years ago and realized of what is the interest coming from the remote worker of digital nomads? So what is it developing uh, sustainable eco-living communities? And it's amazing, you know, I'm so excited every time I hear about their new project and new place. And I can tell you that they were sold out 
last year when you know all uh, world was kind of shut down uh, sitting uh, in quarantine uh, I, I was amazed that many of their projects were sold out on the paper because people could not fly but they were so interested in this investment opportunity that's why now they're extending uh, even more so i i have information about investment uh, opportunities in portugal in spain in each of these countries actually my partners are or developers or real estate uh, brokerage or providers of different lifestyle lovely nice. and, and i can tell it's not only like standard real estate but it's also um, you know uh, real estate opportunities in agro food business it's very interesting for me tick like trees business in panama in nicaragua it's opportunities that kind of average person just probably didn't uh, didn't get information about it. And by the way, these opportunities help people at the same time uh, to get their residences if they're interested. So it's passed to get residence and at the same time to have investment and your vacation uh, place uh, part-time or full-time and a property management company will take care about you know the same property uh, remaining of the year. Lovely. You sound like you have tons and tons of connections. And I'm sure you're so well traveled. You're probably like a kid in a candy store, not being able to pick your favorite place. That would be me. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here. Uh, it sounds wonderful. So when people contact you, what's the first thing that happens? Like, what? How, tell us the process of how you walk a client through. Uh, okay. So on my website, on consultation page, uh, I uploaded the questionnaire. Uh, know yourself questionnaire, you know, like financial advisors and other professionals, which I really recommend people to get uh, in advance. And if it's coupled to answer together to this question, because, you know, there might be different uh, opinions uh, and it's helping people already filter out and answer on some questions that they actually didn't have idea to like, you know, uh, to think about it. So uh, I put like priorities for, for the answer. So when people send me back their answers, we have a uh, first consultation where based on their answers, I'm asking additional questions, clarifying, you know, circumstances and uh, provide them uh, information. And uh, if they really considering, you know, they need probably time to think about it. If they considering uh, to, to work uh, in this direction. Uh, I'm offering to set up a plan, actually several consultation along the road. It might be six months, you know, and I'm advising them to connect with different professionals when they have their answers, like we're working step by step. I'm trying to help them on, uh, you know, every step they can uh, have question. Or if people have investment opportunities, like at the same time, I'm connecting them with uh, investor, uh, with companies abroad, and they work, you know, at the same time on the investment opportunities. So that's why it's customized. What I'm saying because every situation is different, and um, every every person is different. So you've mentioned your uh, website a few times there, Emily. Is that the best place for people to get get a hold of you? Obviously, emilybron.com. Uh, and uh, there is a consultation page with the questionnaire I mentioned. Uh, there is uh, information about my services. People can book consultation. And recently I added resources and media page. Uh, I started to be guest on different podcasts. I have my YouTube channel. So I would like people, you know, to get information about me and what I'm doing before they have uh, you know, uh, booked first uh, consultation because I understand people need uh, to have trust. People need to get information, and I'm supporting them on in each uh, social media and other channels. Wow, oh, that sounds great. Well, it sounds like you're you're very well versed in helping people reach their dreams and goals of trying to get to another another destination, another place in life. So, um, thank you so much, Emily, for being on our show today. And everybody remembers emilybron.com, correct, Emily? Yes. And it's Bron, B-R-O-N, emilybron.com to contact and connect with Emily. So Emily, we leave every podcast with a closing quote. And I always ask the podcast guest if they can figure out what the quote is because the quote matches the guest. 
So I'm going to give you the quote, and then you tell me if you can recognize it. Okay, are you ready? I will try. <laughs> okay. Your profession is not what brings home your paycheck. Your profession is what you are put on earth to do with such passion and such intensity that it becomes spiritual in calling. Who said that? Oh, I, I'm sorry, it's hard for me to guess. Well, it's, I'll give you a hint. It's not certainly not in this century and it's European. Uh, oh, it's oh. a good question. Uh, Craig, what about you? I'm gonna call on you, Claudia, for this. <laughs> it is Vincent Van Gogh. Amazing, and yeah. it's one of my, you know, lovely, <laughs> Uh, artist, I just uh, actually didn't know about his uh, uh, such a word. So thank you for enlightening me. <laughs> I learned something. Thank you. <laughs> um, so everyone, it's been our pleasure having Emily Braun on today. And remember to please like, comment, and to subscribe to our podcast channel. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that notification bell to get updates on our latest podcast. Emily, it's been a pleasure having you on. And I look forward to having a Mai Tai on Maui with you one day. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. It was my pleasure to be with you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, and everybody watching and listening as well. <laughs>